gentlemen and ladies, ladies, and I need all of you to understand something because many people don't have a clue. They just got involved in something without doing their research. And then they expect for me to respond and give them, that's why I said the word respond, and give them all the answers to all of their questions because they have a lot of questions because who we? Mm, 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 mm. Let me show you about a scent. It happens in every court case. If someone files a claim against you and you don't respond, Within the time frame that they give, it means that you have abandoned your claim. Do you understand that? Your failure to respond amounts to an abandonment of your claim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here. Matter of fact, we're gonna we're gonna do this right here. Give me this copy. Oh, that's right. It won't let me copy that way, ladies and gentlemen, because it's stupid. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can explain this. A lot of you have arbitration agreements where you've sent it to a party and they did not respond, and the courts have said. Well, just because they didn't respond doesn't amount to tacit acquiescence. So, no, you can't have your cake pie and eat it too. It don't work like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to understand this right here. This is the part that we were... See, because the defendant does not challenge that contention, they have conceded to that point. Hold on. We're going to do the whole paragraph almost says, after plaintiffs observed, the defendants have not disputed that the company operates as alter egos or a single employer. Neither have they disputed any of the overwhelming factual evidence established that the companies operate as an alter ego or single employer. The defendants do not, however, dispute that the companies operate as an alter ego employer, blah, 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 because the defendants did not challenge the contentions. Hold on. Watch this. They have conceded that point. Okay. Now, this is just about concessions. You know, people just conceding to something. Ah, 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 it's a lot more than that, mama. Uh-oh. There it is. It did copy. So, what we're going to do is there's a document that we're creating. And this document that we're creating, we're going to put it online. I'm going to tell everybody it's going to be under the PDF section. And it's going to be, I'll give the title in just a second. It's going to be under the release dismissal agreement folder. Release dismissal agreement because the most pertinent, oh, duty to respond. I already created the title. <laughs> Lo and behold, oh, heavens to Murgatroyd. Exit stage right. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh. I think I messed up. Hold on. No, not there. I think I messed up in the copying and pasting. Let's make sure. It's not that one because I need the blue. The reason why I need the blue is because, and let's do one more thing. The reason why, I, you see this long address? Man, this is a long address copy. And I don't want to put that long address here, so this one I'm going to do. I'm just going to paste, okay? That's how I'm going to do it. It ain't that long. That's right. But if I hover over it, you see it tells me to hit control, CTRL, plus click on the link. So hit the right click on the mouse, and it'll take me to that page. So these documents, when you see these in it that are hyperlinks, these are hyperlinks. You can actually go to the hyperlink yourself and pull the actual wording of the case. That's why I'm doing it this way. That's why casetext.com. I am advocating. I am saluting. I am letting you know that casetext.com provides an excellent service. Okay? Who else is going to tell you that? 
I, Case Tex ain't paying me a dime. Case Tex ain't paying me a dime. But they're getting free advertisement on my channel. Why? Because Case Tex is allowing me to have access to exactly what I need. Now we're going to the parallel search because a duty to respond and a failure to do so. So watch this. I'm just going to take this statement right here. Just this statement. And I'm going to control copy. Then I'm going to take this statement and I'm going to put it here. The only problem is I'm going to have to get rid of duplicate cases. Hold on. Let me see. Give me a second. Hold on. Let's see. An offeree's silence may be deemed to be consent to a contract when the offeree has a duty to respond. I'm going to search this statement because it's important for you guys to understand what I'm doing for you. You don't have to do the searching. See, I'm going to search the statement in several different ways. Now, this one says offeree. Now, I, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the keyword search and I want to do the parallel searches where we have the exact same statement now I do believe that the first one was the Harvey tree Davy 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 <laughs> Goliath and Davy <laughs> okay offerings duty to respond offering failure to act face uh, in the face of its duty okay I know I saw this one so watch this because I don't want to duplicate things, but I know I'm going to end up duplicating things. See, that's surgery. This is Samsung. Okay. And so it might have given me the same cases. Uh, I want to get rid of the offeree. Okay. I want to do this statement here then. Copy. Now, first... He describes his failure to respond to the September 2nd email as silence and argues that silence constitute assent only if the offeree has stated or given the offeree a reason to understand that assent may be manifest as silence or misaction. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the offeror did state that. Okay, argues that no arbitration agreement was formed for two reasons. This is first options of Chicago versus Kaplan. This is an older case, ladies and gentlemen, where the Supreme Court says, yes, it does. So when I tell you that everything we're doing is 100% what the law permits, yes, we do have the right to send contracts to individuals, and yes, they must respond. Just in this one case, this statement is cited 23 times. Just in this one case, sorry, I have a, a vehicle on the outside. He's got a fifth wheel and he's towing a horse. A horse is a horse is a horse, of course. All right, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to put this in because, see, what I don't want to do is, like I said, it gave me the very same thing for the statement that I put in that was based on my rudimentary memory. So, now, typically silence or an action will be named acceptance of an offer only when a relationship between the parties is such that the offerer is justified by expecting a reply and the offeree is under a duty to respond. If you have a contract with someone, if you have a prior relationship with someone, they have a duty to respond to you. Now, what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Ladies and gentlemen, that song, and she'll be coming round the mountain when she, okay, or it's a small world after all. 
It's a small world. Those three songs have no ending. They never end. Go ahead. Try singing them. They're going to be in your head all day, but try singing them. You'll see that they have no ending. They never end. They go on and on and on, just like me. On and on, like that Energizer Bunny, on and on and on. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, you'll have to edit these how you want when you add them to your responses to the courts. The reason why I'm doing this this morning is because I have an arbitration that I'm going to be conducting on Monday. I cannot go over the details of the arbitration because it would be improper to do so. I have not made up my mind. The parties have until Monday to put in their responses. I am not going to mention the case or how that case will or will not go because I have two arbitrations to be handled between Monday at 12 p.m. and Monday at 12 p.m. Two arbitrations at the same time? Yes, but under our arbitration policy, we have 24 hours in which to respond to parties. So we have 24 hours in which to complete the arbitration. So we can have two at the exact same time, Mama. Two at the exact same time. Okay, I can use this one. The only problem with this one is you see this box? Okay, that's the only problem. So, but I, I'll go through and get rid of all of that because we even have this right here where I have to do this, where I have to put things back in line. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it does have the link, so that's all I need. And... I think that that's the way, okay, I'm going to, because it says, I'll do that because I know that that's what it is. Uh, okay, so what you all need to know, such that an offerer, you, is justified in expecting a reply or an offeree is under a duty to respond. Silence will be deemed as acceptance okay silence will be deemed silence okay that's acceptance each one of your contracts uh oh so we'll we'll do that a letter the respondents requested the appellant to notify the letter silence will be uh, the appellant notified the letter silence will be regarded as acceptance and finding acceptance by conduct finding acceptance by conduct finding acceptance by conduct when a party allows the other party to perform contract without objection finding acceptance by conduct when party performs under the terms of the contract without objection copy that's the other statement. We're going to put all of these in this document so that you can pick and choose which one of these you's going to rely upon. Now, I'm not going to spend all the video doing this. I just want to see you how the research is being done because guess what? Many of you can do the exact same research, but you're not. You're relying on me to do it for you. I wish you wouldn't do that. Mama, I wish he wouldn't do that. Okay, I wish you wouldn't do that. I wish you would understand that you have the same abilities that I have. Well, I don't have your smarts. You don't need my smarts. They're mine. Why would you want to have what belongs to me? Stop being greedy and getting what everybody else has. Go get what you want. Don't get what I... Well, I want your smarts. Well, you can't have mine. I told you it ain't for sale. We ain't under no contract. I ain't got no obligation to you. Okay, that's why if you notice, I'm very careful in how I speak. So some people, as I said in the video yesterday, some people be saying, well, you said this. You, no, do not, do not even think of coming there. That's the wrong place to be coming with me talking about what I said. Because I am very careful in what I say. And many of you listen to me and you see that I'm watching what I say. Why are you watching what you say? Because many of you people, oh, did you call us you people again? Mother, don't you dare sit up here. Uh, look. Don't start with me. Not today. This is Friday the 13th. You know about bad luck, Barry? 
<laughs> I don't believe in bad luck or good luck, y'all. The Bible calls Satan the God of good luck. So why would I want to believe in any luck? God does not give people luck. He either helps them or he doesn't. And according to the scriptures, he helps the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, like your mama. I'm sorry. Stop that. God, stop interfering with the conversation. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why he just be stepping off and just thinking he could say anything he won't. No, it ain't because I let him. I don't let him be saying he just be speaking up out of turn. No, I don't be letting him. No, we ain't the same person. You better leave me alone. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that was an impersonal in, in conversation. I wasn't supposed to be letting y'all hear that part of the conversation. I sorry. That's because I'm doing the editing right now so that we can have something to edit about. Okay. Tick, tick, tock. Okay. I'm bringing paragraphs together on purpose so that we can conserve space. You have the links. You can always go to the link and pull up any additional information you need. Okay? Just that simple, but I'm putting this stuff in here for you. Not for me. I have a life. Okay, this is for you. I know this stuff already. If you listen to the videos, I've been repeating this stuff over and over and over again. Silence is equated to acceptance or assent. When there is a duty to respond, many people in their contract was saying silence is acquiescence. Ladies and gentlemen, silence is only acquiescence when there is a duty to respond. So you must document, and the contracts, each one of our templates, do document that they are between parties who have a prior relationship with each other. And there is a duty to respond to inquiries, legitimate inquiries, not just any inquiry. Hey, Brad! Where is Paris at? Hey, Paris! Brad's calling you? I ain't Brad. Oh, well, that idiot calling you, Paris! Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have some that use the term without, so, or cannot. Those case laws we're not concerned about because they're not the, the purpose of this. However, we're still going to use them. And see, this is the thing. This is why we have those two lines. So that's why I have the dot, dot, dots. Okay, but notice this. When a party under a duty to speak or when his failure to speak is inconsistent with honest dealings and misleads another, then his silence may be deemed as acquiescence. If the defendant, particularly under which the acceptance may be inferred from silence merely, in such cases, silence can operate ordinarily as an acceptance only by way of estoppel. And to raise an estoppel from silence there, and it'll tell you why and how you can bring estoppel. When I tell you that the contracts were put together meticulously and specifically designing to help those of you who don't know nothing, okay? And there are a lot of you who don't know nothing. Man, I don't know nothing, okay? There are a lot of you who don't know nothing. So, because there's a lot of you who don't know nothing, that's why we put together these contracts to help you. Because we know you need it. Okay? So that's what we're doing here. We, we doing it and doing it and doing it well. L O Cool J. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and let you guys get back to your life okay we just wanted to let you know those of you who have arbitrations those of you who received adverse judgments please understand as we told you before the courts did not have the authority to do what they did because they never addressed the question no one asked the court to be the judge of the matter what's happening is that these attorneys came together in a collective understanding that they would wait until after the arbitration hearing they would not participate and by not participating they would then challenge everything afterwards the law is aware of that attorneys have been doing that for quite some time waiting until after everything is over and then challenging it ladies and gentlemen I also have an arbitration uh, not an arbitration a consult to do in a couple of minutes this is somebody who paid for the consult over a month ago Normally, I don't allow it to take so long, 
but they have been traveling abroad so right now they're in a European country and we're going to be handling our long distance consult it's not the first person I've done a consult with who's in a different country um, because pretty much these laws are the same they operate the same why because they're international no 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 well anyway what you all need to know is each one of your contracts were 100 percent legal if you followed the law what is the law that you notified the other party and gave them an opportunity to respond and an opportunity to opt out if they did not seize the opportunity to opt out then that's on them okay they don't get to sit up there and play them games we because this doesn't give us the statement before we just gonna do it that way okay as a matter of fact, uh, as a matter of law the plaintiff cannot establish an acceptance under the general rule the general rule is of course s subject to exceptions okay so what we will do is we can establish we can establish acceptance what is the general rule that they had a duty to respond so this particular case I don't add because this is one of those cases that does not help you sorry it I got sticky key syndrome come on computer catch on up hold on one second y'all it literally took one second before I could click the button back it had already completed itself regarded as an acceptance so it says you have to notify them that their lack of response will be guarded as as acceptance ladies and gentlemen do yourself a favor I've seen this this quote before do yourselves a favor because we've I remember taking that and getting rid of that uh, I'm gonna get a motion to dismiss out of there because there's no reason for us to have that in here I'm gonna do all of you a favor I'm going to tell you, stop doubting the process. I keep showing you over and over again. This one is the same case. Uh, that's Rivera, 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 Rivera. Because they keep saying highlighted acceptance under Puerto Rican law. And this one says highlighted under Puerto Rican law. So they're the same thing. So what I do is I, yep, AT&T Mobility okay two cases are the same and it does that this is three cases that are the same so that's three cases we don't need because they do that yes I'm paying attention to what's in here now I may miss one or two because I'm not gonna be going over every single one because that's not now Becker I've seen Becker before where you at Becker and because we did several different searches I gotta go and search the last one and I'm gonna do that let's talk about arbitration real quick and let's talk about those of you who have newer contracts and who have not gotten an arbitration done as we said before your contract says that you don't have to use SAA as a matter of fact please understand SAA has not done a single arbitration to this very day it's always been done by impartial third-party independent arbitrators the reason why is because your contract allows for that and we did that so that nobody could claim that there was collusion or a conspiracy or people were acting in conjunction with each other exactly exactly what they attempted to do go back and watch the videos that I did when we were setting up the arbitration association and see how that's exactly what I told you the reason why we were having subcontractors the reason why there were no employees at SAA SAA only facilitated the proof of service that's all SAA facilitated they want to make it seem like SAA facilitated a whole lot more uh -uh. Uh -uh. Y'all don't get to do that. Y'all don't get to tell us what we did. 
No, we already told you what we did, and we told you the reason. Well, the reason why they have subcontractors is to limit liability. You see, they paid attention to the videos. And you better believe that's the reason why we have subcontractors, so that you can't go after the corporation saying the corporation did something wrong. As long as our arbitrators follow the law, they're protected by sovereign immunity. The same immunity that judges are protected by. Penny Mac and other companies are trying to evade and erode the principles of law. I'm so sorry. They don't understand. Well, they're lawyers. So you know how lawyers are. They're like parents. They can never understand. They can never overstand. They can never withstand. They can never, they just can't. Because Stan, he was following Eminem around too much and Eminem didn't appreciate it. So he wrote a letter to Stan. So anybody else want to stand? Y'all go right ahead. I'm going to write y'all a letter. Those of you who have arbitrations, those of you who have contracts that you have not gotten addressed yet, you've not taken care of yet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this case keeps coming up. Okay? Every single time I put a phrase in, that case comes up. I don't think I've seen this one. Oh, wait. Hold on. We can't do it this way. I don't want I don't want these cases. I want these cases. Oh, it says it doesn't finding acceptance by conduct. Hold on. Okay, that's how we do that. Excuse me, y'all. I got to go find out who's trying to call me. Okay, this is what I needed. It is well established that acceptance may be shown by conduct. So, although these cases may be duplicative, duplicative, did you say duplicative or duplicative? Duplicative. Duplicative. That sounds like a tongue twister. Nope, duplicative is not a tongue twister. Saying duplicative, duplicative, that's a tongue twister. But duplicative is not a tongue twister. Say it five times fast and you will definitely be twisting tongues. Oh, my mama told me about the tongue twisters. Hoo-wee, I remember tongue twister when he first came out and he just started calling himself twister because he knew that everybody thought the name tongue was just a little bit too too juvenile. So he started, and then, then the, the, the rapper called juvenile came out and so he just called himself twister. Y'all remember twister? Okay. Getting back, sorry, the call that just came in was somebody who received notification that they should call me because the person they were working with ran into a snag and could not help them any longer. And so they referred them to me as if we are in a network or something. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not part of a network. Okay, if you're working with someone else, I've always told everybody, and I made it quite clear continually, you cannot mix other people's junk with my junk. Are you saying that your stuff is junk? You better believe it. The same junk that all the rest of the people out there are doing, the same junk that the courts are doing, I'm doing the same thing because it's all junk. It's all words, people, and it's all playing with words. So don't worry about it. We're going to create this document. You see it right here? Now, we already told you what we're going to call it. So I'm going to hit save because it says document number one. That ain't the document. Duty to respond. Okay? That's going to be the name of our document. Do this. To respond, not do this with an S, but do this with a T-Y. Do this to respond. Now, follow me, ladies and gentlemen. If you've downloaded one of the contracts, templates, and you have filled out that template, that becomes your contract. It's not ours anymore. It's not our template anymore. Once you input your information, you created a new agreement. Follow me because many of you, this is 29 minutes. This is the point you need to be paying attention. When you've downloaded the contract and you input your information, you've created a new agreement. That agreement lets the other party know we have a prior relationship. It's one of the terms of a contract. Watch. We're going to do that. I'm going to put due to the respond and elements of a contract in the same document. So watch this. 
This is a lot of case law, ain't it? Yeah, it sure is, buddy. So let's do that at the top. Let's do E L E elements of a contract. <coughs> there are technically five elements of a contract. However, our contract satisfies eight of those five elements. That don't make no sense. How can you have eight of five elements? Watch this. Uh, we're going to put V for transfer. Elements of a contract. Then I'll do a parallel search if it doesn't give me what I'm looking for. Because I just want the elements of a contract. Uh, offer and accept an essential element of a contract. Uh, what I want prove elements weren't fair to prove element. Okay, let's do this. We're going to say we're going to do this and it's going to give me the parallel search and that's what I'm looking for. The essential elements of an action are based on a, based on a contract are. So they're going to give us the elements essential elements of a contract. It is essential for the existence of the contract to be, okay, so let's go ahead and let's document what the elements of a contract are. We have to wait a couple of seconds because it's finding the term in the document, okay, and now I told you there are eight. These guys are going to give us four, okay. Consent of all parties is lacking. Hold on. Because if there's a duty to respond, then that implies consent. That's why it's implied consent agreements. Okay? So, the moment you place your information in one of the templates and you send it... Nobody asked you for that. Get rid of this. Come on now. Get rid of that. We've already saved it. Get out of here. Once you place your information in the agreement, it's not an agreement. It's just an offer, and it's a proposed offer. Sorry, I'm waiting for my computer to catch up. Doing a lot of stuff in the background. And I think it's downloading uh, Windows updates or something. So hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let me show you guys something so that you'll get it, so that you'll understand, because there are some, some things that are wrong here. First, their consent, it's a contract, so their consent is already implied, especially through conduct. Okay, so it is a contract that the parties be capable of contracting. that there's an expiration date and then what this thing does is it says then we go to uh oh can't do number three because it's already got number three so we're gonna do number five gotta stay alive with number five y'all it's a new error did you error no five and it likes to put the quotation mark here. So we're going to put a quotation mark because this is what the law says. So we're going to put a quotation mark. Sufficient cause of consideration. Okay. We're going to get rid of sufficient cause and say... Value and consideration. A lawful object <laughs> we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna say hold on
A lawful object is doable and workable. You can't ask anybody to do the um, the impossible. Got to remember that quote. Ladies and gentlemen, we have doable and workable. Okay, uh, hold on one second. We got that, A and D, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this so I don't have to be retyping the same thing over and over and over again, V. And then we take this and we change that to seven. We take arbitration clause and we change this to must include an arbitration clause and a commerce clause okay uh oh let's see if, yeah we're gonna keep it that way uh this one is that because you can't say and commerce clause but a commerce clause okay let's see we said there were eight so must have an expiration date must be between parties capable of contracting or uh, parties of age to contract competent must have an expiration date must have an opt-out clause must have value and consideration that could be eight but not going to do that must be doable and workable that's one must have uh, arbitration clause must include a commerce clause and there is another one but these are the essential elements and I'll add the other one if I can remember it these are the essential elements of a contract, ladies and gentlemen. All contracts must include these. Must be, see, this one is, let's do my must with a capital. Okay, must be between two or more parties capable of contracting, must have an expiration date, must have an opt-out clause, must have value and consideration, must be doable and workable, must include an arbitration clause, must have a commerce clause, and must have an, this is, give me a second, let me see if I can remember. Sorry, <laughs> I do know what it is, and I knew I was forgetting it, and I knew it was essential. So let me show you what the final issue is dealing with arbitration. It's not clued. There must be a prior relationship between the parties. Okay, these are the elements of a contract involving arbitration. These are the eight elements that are essential for a contract involving arbitration. Let somebody argue with me, some ignorant person and or judge. Okay, because they're supposed to know more than I do. The prior relationship is the only thing that gives you the obligation and or duty to respond. Okay, uh, let's see, expiration date, opt-out clause, value and consideration. Ah, value and consideration is not one, so that's going to be nine, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's going to be nine. I apologize. 
The prior relationship imposes the last thing that I just said. A duty to respond. They must have a duty to respond. Each one of the contract templates that are on either SACOM or SAA's website must have these elements. These elements are already included, so there must be a prior relationship. It already has an arbitration clause. It already involves commerce. The contract is doable and workable because it says if they do what they're supposed to do, you will do what you're supposed to do. You're not asking them to do the impossible. You tell them because they have access to certain information, then they are obligated to provide you a response. You give them a certain amount of time. You have a prior relationship. You don't have a prior relationship. Our contract templates will not work for you because a prior relationship puts upon them a duty to respond to your lawful inquiries. And everything you're asking them for is things that you have the right to ask them for. Here is your proof. Anybody want to challenge you? You just attach this document and you document the fact that, hey, you met each one of these requirements. So shut up and get out of my way. All right. Let's do this right here. We're going to take this and we're going to play with this, y'all. So I just need y'all to work with me because some of y'all ain't going to understand what I'm about to do. But I just need y'all to work with me. Captain Caveman! No, we don't want to go that far. Okay. There you go. Essential elements of a contract. Well, we're going to do... Let's do this. Okay. Essential elements of a contract. What an arbitration clause. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Essential elements of a contract. What an arbitration clause. Here you go. And here is how you stand on your square. Go over these case laws. Know what your rights are. And if you've done one arbitration, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, because some of y'all don't want to pay attention. I have 10 minutes. If you have a contract and the other party fails to respond and you get a default, you, if you want the tax credits, you have to validate the debt the simple default is not enough. That's why you need the arbitration. If you go to the arbitrator for summary disposition, if you go to the arbitrator for summary disposition on a default, the arbitrator can only consider whether or not there was a prior relationship and whether or not the other party had a duty to respond and whether or not the evidence proves that the other party did not respond within the time frame. That's the only thing the arbitrator can consider because that's the only matter that is before the arbitrator. Did they receive notice? Then that means if they had a duty to respond, there is a valid agreement because an offeree's silence may be deemed as consent to a contract when the offeree has a duty to respond to an offer and fails to act in the face of this duty. Nobody is conspiring. Respond to your contracts, people! the same as you're obligated to respond to your contracts as each one of these cases are documented, then they're obligated to respond to the contract and the arbitrator has only one option and that is to go according to the terms of the contract and nothing else. So, get your arbitrations done, people. Then, once you have the arbitration done, you send the arbitrator, well, at least my arbitration association that I'm a subcontractor for, it sends out notices, hey, you have a debt. If, if the party is subject to an award, then they receive a notice of debt. Then six months after that notice of debt, the person gets to write off that debt. 
when they write off that debt like I showed you yesterday. Hold on. Let me see. Is it up here? No, it's not here. It's uh, it's here and here. Like I showed you yesterday. When you apply for tax credits, there is somebody who owes the taxes on the interest. Well, this is a letter from the IRS saying, hey, you owe these taxes on the interest because you did not do a 1099-C. You're going to have to follow the process, people. You can receive a refund. You can have the credits. And if you do the credits correctly, you can sell the credits on the market. There are so many options. Nobody's trying to get somebody to do something that's illegal. You're not creating tax credits. The government creates tax credits because you're helping to balance the budget of the government. You're helping, helping to eliminate debt in the United States. Once you get that arbitration award, you have the right to offset it. Now, those of you, pay attention. If you have not paid attention to anything up to this point, pay attention to this. Take this document. If you had a judgment by a judge and it was contrary, take this document, send it to the court with a simple motion saying motion to vacate judgment. You had no jurisdiction. The parties had an agreement between each other and you did not have the proper hearing for determining that because you did not have jurisdiction. Only the arbitrator gets to determine whether or not there is a valid agreement. Real quickly, hold on. I'll, I'll add that to this. That's the video that I just did. 99% uploaded. Uh, we got to go here. I got to go because I have an arbitration. Not an arbitration, but a hearing that I have to have. Why did I go here? This is the wrong one. Where is you at? Right here. Okay. Hold on. What we're going to do, if it lets me, I don't even know. That's the from the video of the transferable tax. Oh, come on now. Sorry. Let's do this first so that I can get up here yeah it wants to play Okay, tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. I don't have time. An arbitrator's authority is defined not only by the terms of the agreement, but also by the scope of the issue submitted to the parties. Thus, it is the responsibility of the arbitrator in the first instance to interpret the scope of the party's submission, but it's within the court's providence to review the arbitrator's interpretation. No, it isn't. There, There is nothing in law that gives the court's the right that's why that's 1996 okay the arbitrator not the court must decide whether the arbitration agreement is valid that's what we're looking for the arbitrator not the district court may determine the validity of the terms of the arbitration agreement i will add this to the document so while i am doing that y'all know that the video is being put up gotta go ladies and gentlemen i have this consult that i gotta get started and i got less than three minutes so I don't have time to be sitting up here playing around. What you want? I'm just playing around because I ain't got no time. Uh, we're going to go all the way down because I can't let go of the mouse to shut the video off. Because 
If I do, I'll have to start all over again. I'll have to go through the same thing all over again. So we're down to the bottom. This is the last one. And we're off. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good day. Have a nice day. I am gotta go. Bye-bye.